Pikshu looked around by the light of the lamp he held in his hand. He saw the prince and his companions standing. The next moment the lamp and the light disappeared. After a while Pikshu was seen walking along the steps of the lake. The prince came to the station. He looked up at his face in the moonlight. Devabriya! Come! Come! A congregation of Vachalya Pikshus awaits them. The Mahathiro Guru has also visited. My heart is filled with gratitude that they have arrived on time. Said. Fellows. I know this boy has many faults. However, I have been observing a vow never to fail. I have never failed in that fast. Said Pani Selvar. I found out they didn't arrive until sunset today. So I was a little worried. If I had come earlier, I might not have been able to fulfill my vow. That's why I came on time. Yes, yes. Many clouds circle to hide the torch-like light in the sky, we know it. But all those clouds are blown to pieces by the mighty wind of Buddha's mercy. Let them go. Who stand here? Are they well informed? Worthy of their perfect faith? They will not break their vows. Accomplished, asked Pikshu. Foots. I trust these friends as I trust both my arms. However, if they are unwilling, I am willing to leave them here and come alone with them. Said the prince. No, no. I'm not willing to take on so great a responsibility. The place I'm taking you to is very safe. However, it's a long way to go. Who can tell what danger lurks behind which pillar? Let these two come. Said Pikshu. Hearing all this Vandiyadeva's heart was troubled. He was filled with excitement at the thought that the prince had shown such complete confidence in him, whom he did not know before, and brought him to the most intimate affair. Something important is going to happen tonight, what will it be, gave a memorable sensation. The Pikshu went ahead to lead, and the others followed. They went through the steps of the lagoon and entered a room hidden in the stone wall at the back. Pikshu did something in the dark by going to one side of it. Immediately there was a way. Light was seen within. Pikshu carried the lamp which he kept there in his hand. The way was blocked when the other three entered. The sound of the waterfall falling from the lion's face in the lake outside was faintly heard. Otherwise they would not have believed that a moment ago we were standing on the shore of the lake. They went through a narrow tunnel. The path was winding. It seemed to go on and on. The sound of their footsteps and its reverberations were terrifying. In the middle of Vandiyathevan, there was a suspicion that the prince had been deceived and got caught up in some kind of intrigue. The path got wider and wider and finally a hall was visible. What kind of hall? Only a small part of the lamp held by the picture was dimly visible. However, its pillars were known to be marble pillars. Buddha statues on all four sides gave darshan. Standing Buddhas, reclining Buddhas, seated Buddhas, blessing Buddhas, praying Buddhas, many Buddha statues appeared. They went beyond the marble hall. Again a narrow passage, then another hall whose pillars are made of copper plates. They turned pearly red in color. Copper plates are also on the roof of this hall. Among them are various pictorial works. Various Buddha statues on the four sides. This is the unique hall with yellow wooden pillars. The ivory pillared hall all these they passed. Even though he was walking at a high speed, Vandiyathevan kept touching the pillars here and there. It astonished him beyond measure that the prince ignored them and looked straight ahead. After passing all the metal halls, they finally arrived at a simple black stone hall. But a rare sight was seen in the spacious hall. In the earlier Mandapams there were no human beings except the statues of Lord Buddha. Many Buddhist monks were gathered in this black stone hall. Their facial mandalas were full of tejas. Among them Mahathiro Guru was sitting on a pedestal as the central figure. In front of him was seen a golden lion statue of Navaratna. Beside it on a pedestal were a crown of jewels and a scepter and a scepter. Lamps were lit on all four sides of the hall. In the light of the lamp, the golden crown, the manamakudam, and the robe were shining. When the prince and others entered the hall, all the bhikkhus stood up and chanted Long Live Buddha, 
Long live Dharma, long live Sangam. Prince Mahathiro came near the Guru and bowed down. The chief of the Bhikkhus pointed to a simple pita lying near the lion and asked the prince to sit on it. Great Guru! You who are senior in prayer and Dharma should sit before this child, prayed the prince. When the eighth Yatsaka Mahaguru sat down on his pedestal, the prince also humbly sat down on the seat designated for him. Beloved Prince of the Gods! This Mahabodhi Sangha is overjoyed at your arrival. You have come at great pains to agree to all the conditions we have specified. You need no other proof that the Lord Buddha's mercy is complete with you. The great Guru said this in Pali, and the Bhikshu who brought the prince translated it into Tamil. The other Bhikshus shouted, Sadhu! Sadhu! They chanted and expressed their happiness. Most of them are in ruins today. No royal family has ever ordered that the dilapidated viharas should be repaired and paved over. Prince Arulmas Hivarma had the privilege of giving birth to such an agna. Befitting of the gods. The Buddha Mahasanga greatly appreciates their work. The prince bowed his head and accepted Mahathiro's greeting. Even in this ancient holy city, the Parahara festival was banned for a long time. One hundred years ago, the Pandyas once captured this city. Then the Sri Lankan royal family went to Pulastaya city. Since then, the Parahara festival has not been held here. You ordered that the festival can be held again in this holy year. You also provided the necessary facilities for it. The Buddhist Sanghas are also happy about this. The prince bowed again and said, Master, if there is anything more I can do to serve the Buddha Sangha, kindly do it. Said. Today, after witnessing their great deeds, one has to admit that the Cholas were the descendants of the Sibic Emperor. The Chola clan had forgotten the great mercy of Lord Buddha due to delusion. That mercy has been showered upon them today. We have also received divine guidance for that. Behold! Saying Athyatsaka Thirol looked back, some pictures brought another picture with the plinth who was reclining on one of the pedestals. The whole body of that Bhikkhus was trembling incessantly. The hands were trembling, the legs were shaking, the body was shaking, the head was shaking, the teeth were chattering, the lips were shaking. Throbbed, brows twitched above red eyes. It has to be admitted that the descendants of Sibic Emperor were Cholas. The Chola clan had forgotten the great mercy of Lord Buddha due to delusion. That mercy has been showered upon them today. We have also received divine guidance for that. Behold! Saying Athyatsaka Thirol looked back, some pictures brought another picture with the plinth who was reclining on one of the pedestals. The whole body of that Bhikkhus was trembling incessantly. The hands were trembling, the legs were shaking, the body was shaking, the head was shaking, the teeth were chattering, the lips were shaking. Throbbed, brows twitched above red eyes. It has to be admitted that the descendants of Sibic Emperor were Cholas. The Chola clan had forgotten the great mercy of Lord Buddha due to delusion. That mercy has been showered upon them today. We have also received divine guidance for that. Behold! Saying Athyatsaka Thirol looked back, some pictures brought another picture with the plinth who was reclining on one of the pedestals. The whole body of that Bhikkhus was trembling incessantly. The hands were trembling, the legs were shaking, the body was shaking, the head was shaking, the teeth were chattering, the lips were shaking. Throbbed, brows twitched above red eyes. We have also received divine guidance for that. Behold! Saying Athyatsaka Thirol looked back, some pictures brought another picture with the plinth who was reclining on one of the pedestals. The whole body of that Bhikkhus was trembling incessantly. The hands were trembling, the legs were shaking, the body was shaking, the head was shaking, the teeth were chattering, the lips were shaking. Throbbed, brows twitched above red eyes. We have also received divine guidance for that. Behold! Saying Athyatsaka Thirol looked back, some pictures brought another picture with the plinth who was reclining on one of the pedestals. The whole body of that Bhikkhus was trembling incessantly. The hands were trembling, the legs were shaking, the body was shaking, the head was shaking, the teeth were chattering, the lips were shaking. 
throbbed, brows twitched above red eyes. Thirty-three crore devas have breathed upon this Pikshu. Hear the devas speak with compassion. Said Mahathiro. From the mouth of the enraged Buddha Pikshu, some languages came very quickly in a trembling and confused voice. When he stopped talking, the superintendent said. Thirty-three crore devas are blessing themselves. In ancient times the Deva Ambriya Ashokavardhana covered the land of Bharata under an umbrella and spread the Buddha Dharma all over the world. The gods bless that they will be the ruler of such a great empire. Like Ashoka, they also want to spread the Buddha Dharma in the world. In this ancient Anuradhapura they command to start and conduct it. Prince! What is your response to the order of the gods? On hearing this, the prince said, Great Master! The gods are powerful. They will act according to their will. But does not the servant now understand what is their duty? Said. I will tell it myself, signaled the chief Thero, and the raving Piksha was taken away. Then Pikshuthalivar said Prince, look at the lion in front of you, look at the bell crown, look at the scepter. All the kings of the Sri Lankan royal dynasty sat on this lion, wore this bell crown and held this scepter in their hands, then they became kings recognized by the Buddhist Sangha. Emperor Dushtakamanu also. This is the lion throne on which Devan Ambiatissar and Mahasena sat and crowned. This is the crown they wore on their heads. This is the scepter they carried in their hands. Such an ancient lion throne the lion that has created kings for a thousand years is waiting for them. Sit on this. Vandiyathevan, who was listening to all this carefully, became very excited. He thought what if he lifted the prince and made him sit for that moment. But there was no change in the prince's expression. In a calm voice as before, he stopped by saying, Athyatsaka. How is that possible? Is King Mahinda, who was crowned on this Singh Adana, still alive today? Even if his whereabouts are unknown. He stopped. These Sanghas also want to elect themselves. If you agree, we can have the coronation tonight. For a while there was a silence in that hall as if it was in the depths of the earth and the ocean. Vandiyadeva's excitement has reached its peak. At that time Pani's Selvar got up from his pedestal and saluted the assembly of Buddhist Pikhas. Vandiyadeva reached the border of Kuthugalam. When the prince sat on the throne, he was furious that he could take the bell crown and burn it himself. The prince said Mahans. I bow to you. I praise and worship your generosity in giving this ancient treasure with boundless love and faith to this boy. But the task you are now undertaking is beyond my power. I was born and brought up in the Chola country. The land provided food, the rivers provided food. Water also made this body. I came here under the orders of Father Sundarashola Chakraborty. I cannot do anything without knowing his will. Pikshu interrupted and said Prince. Do you not know that their father Sundarachola today seems to be in prison without freedom? Yes, my father is sick and bedridden. He has lost the power of his legs. Yet in his name, taking authority from him, I am under the command of the rulers of the Chola country. If I accept this Singh Athan without their command, I shall be a traitor and a traitor. If you think so, we are ready to send a delegation to Tanjavur. Your father is very devoted to the Buddhist Dharma. He will not refuse our request. The subjects of this country are. Who has the right to distribute the kingdom without their consent? The people of this country will regard it as a reward to have them as king. All may agree, may be happy. I value my Tamaka's will more than anyone else's in this world. My mother bore me, the Golden River saved my life. But my Tamaka nurtured my knowledge and opened my inner eyes. More than such a person's will is one within me. The command of the voice is superior to me. Great men. My inner voice did not tell me to accept the great blessing that you willingly give to this little boy. Please forgive and bless this little boy. Again there was silence in the great assembly for a while. The sound of Vandiyadeva's pulses throbbing fell on his ears only. The way to get here is known only to the leaders of the Buddhist Sangha who are currently gathered at this place. No one can get here without one of us showing the way. 
Sri Lankan kings are invited here only once in their lifetime, to be crowned by the Buddhist Sangha. This is a temple with such a sacred secret path. You should not tell anyone outside about what you came here, went here, or anything that happened here. Their friends should not tell either. If you say so, you will be subjected to severe divine curse. Do not tell anyone outside about anything that happened here. Their friends should not tell either. If you say so, you will be subjected to severe divine curse. Do not tell anyone outside about anything that happened here. Their friends should not tell either. If you say so, you will be subjected to severe divine curse. Superintendent There is no need for a curse, I brought my friends here with a promise not to tell anyone outside. I will not break my promise for a single day. Said Pani Selvar. Half a century later, Prince Aromas Hivarma, Alvarkadian and Vandiyathevan were walking in the moonlight on the streets of Anuradhapuram. Vandiyadeva, who had kept his mouth tightly shut till he was inside the Viharat, now unleashed all the thoughts he had suppressed. Chola country. The land is suitable for water resources. But this is not equal to Sri Lanka. You have kicked away the throne of such a secret island. What is this? What is this? What do you say to the Bhikkhus who came to offer you the crown? Next, I was also standing pillar to pillar. Shouldn't you have given it to me? He was pouring out all these things. The prince tried to pacify him. Did I tell you that the son of Dush Takamanu renounced the kingdom of Sri Lanka for the love of a woman named Salya Sokamela? Did that not reach your ears? Said. All ascended. So which woman do you love? So who stands in the way of your ascension to the throne? Vandiyathevan asked. Not one woman, two women. I love two women, Sathyam and Dharma. It is for them that I don't want the Sri Lanka bell crown. Prince, they look like young men. You talk like an old man. Who knows who among us is old and whose soul is dying? While they were talking like this, they were going near an old mansion on the side of the road. He heard someone knocking on the opposite side of the road. A figure was standing where the sound was heard. Come this way. So saying, the prince crossed the street towards the image. Others followed. They were about halfway across the street when they heard a great tramp behind them, they looked back. The roof of the house they were passing by was collapsing. If they hadn't turned to cross the road there they would have fallen on their heads and killed them. Three lives were spared in the space of a moment. And what kind of lives? Who knows who among us will end up dying? How true is the word said by Pawnee's Selver? Thinking like this, Vandiyadeva was standing in the middle of the road and watching, both of them went beyond. When Vandiyathevan approached them again, the figure standing there was clearly visible in the moonlight. At that time he had a doubt whether to believe what he was seeing in front of his eyes or not. What madness is this? How is this possible? How could Nandini, seen in Tanjavar's Palyavatarayar Palace, come here to this Anuradhapura road? Why come here in the middle of the night? The next moment the figure magically disappeared. Only two others stood.